It might be a little late to get in on the Bitcoin bubble, but it's not too late to start building apps for people that use cryptocurrencies. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to use Coinbase as a custom authentication provider for Firebase. That means your users will be able to log into Firebase via Coinbase, and then you can use the Coinbase API to handle Bitcoin transactions. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe, and you can follow along with the source code at angularfirebase.com. Let's first take a look at how this is going to work. The user is going to click the Login with Coinbase button in our Angular app. That redirects them to Coinbase, where they authenticate into their account. Then Coinbase redirects them back to Angular with an encrypted auth code. The code then goes to a cloud function, which exchanges it for an actual access token and refresh token from Coinbase. We can then mint our own custom Firebase authentication token, then send it back to Angular and log the user in as a Firebase user. Learning this process will also allow you to authenticate with other providers such as Instagram, Twitch, Spotify, and many others. To get started, you'll need a Coinbase account, and you'll want to create a new OAuth2 application. Make note of your API keys, and then make sure you set a redirect URI that points to localhost 4200 slash redirect. After that, you can create a brand new Angular 5 app and make sure it has the routing module. From there, you'll need to install Angular Fire 2 and Firebase, so make sure to follow the official instructions at the Angular Fire repo. Now, inside of our Angular project, we're going to initialize cloud functions. We're also going to use the new TypeScript option, so make sure your Firebase CLI tools are updated to the latest version. I also have a few dependencies in the cloud function environment. The main one is Axios, which replaces the node HTTP module. The reason we do that is because promises are a lot easier to work with than callbacks when dealing with asynchronous activity in a cloud function. Then I also have cores and crypto, which we'll see in use here in just a second. Because we're going to be minting custom auth tokens, we need to use our actual service account from Firebase. It's just a JSON file, and I'll quickly show you in Firebase where you can find it. Go to Project Settings, then Service Account, and then download a new private key for Node.js. Then you can go ahead and save it inside the functions directory. This file contains sensitive API keys, so make sure not to expose them in your front-end code or any kind of public Git repository. After that, we'll go ahead and import our dependencies and then initialize cores with origin true. I'm only testing these functions locally, so for right now I'm setting the redirect URI to localhost 4200 slash redirect. I am also setting variables for the Coinbase API keys, and make sure you follow these variable names because they're going to be reformatted as query parameters later on. Because they're going to be reused frequently, I'm setting them as a default params object here. Now we're ready to write the first actual cloud function, which is called redirect. The only thing it needs to do is properly format a URL, and then redirect the user to that point so they can authenticate into their Coinbase account. A useful trick is to put all of these parameters in an object, and then use query string stringify to add them to the URL. It'll make your code a lot more readable and maintainable. The scope parameter is the interesting one. That'll tell us the permission level that we have on the user's account, which in this case will be able to read that user's wallet. And you can get additional details on each of these parameters from the Coinbase docs. So now we're gonna switch gears into Angular and we'll see how we can trigger this redirect URL. First, I'm going to generate a component for the user details. Then I'll generate another to handle the auth redirect, and I'll generate a service so we can share some functionality between components. Let's go ahead and start in the auth service where we import Angular Fire auth. Then in the constructor, we will observe the auth state from Firebase. So the user observable is the current user from Firebase. What I do next here is considered a bad practice in Angular, but I'm doing it to keep this demo simple. I'm opening a pop-up window that points to our redirect cloud function. The proper way to do this is to wrap the window in its own service so you can use it in non-browser environments such as on the server or in a mobile app. There's still a lot of code to get through, so I'm just going to cheat a little bit on this one. So that's going to open the pop-up, and then once we actually have the minted token from Firebase, we're going to call sign in with custom token from Angular Fire Auth. This method just allows you to sign in with your own custom minted token. And once signed in, we'll just go ahead and cheat again and call window close to close the pop-up. Before we jump into the components, I'm going to go into the app routing module. And you can see we have the user details component on the root path. And then we have the auth redirect component at the redirect path. That path should match the redirect URI you set up in Coinbase. Then we'll jump over to the user details component. And right now, all this needs to do is inject the auth service. 
and then we'll unwrap that user observable in the HTML. Later on, we'll get the user's Bitcoin wallet, but for now, we're not going to worry about that. In the HTML, we can unwrap the user observable, and if it's not defined, we'll give the user a button to log in with Coinbase. Now let's go ahead and run our cloud functions by running npm run serve from the functions directory. That should tell you that cloud functions are being emulated on port 5000. Then if we go into Angular and click login with Coinbase, it brings up this pop-up and redirects us to our Coinbase account. It requires the user to sign in with two-factor authentication, so it'll send them a text message that they then have to verify inside this form. After they log into the Firebase account, then they can click Authorize, and that redirects us back to our Angular app inside this pop-up. At this point, nothing happens because we still need to mint our authentication token and create the user in Firebase. We're going to do that by going back to index.ts inside of our Cloud Functions directory. We're going to wrap the request response inside of cores, and then we're going to return a promise from the function called mint auth token. And that's just going to return our custom token in JSON format. So that looks nice and simple, but there's actually a lot more to it. Instead of writing a big long promise chain, I'm going to use an asynchronous helper function. So we do that by using the async keyword followed by the function mint auth token, and it's going to take the request as an argument. If you're not familiar with async await, it's nothing more than syntactic sugar for promises. Our async function returns a promise itself, and it does that by awaiting a bunch of other promises inside of itself. It results in way better code readability when you need to share values at different points in the promise chain. The first thing we need to do is hit the Coinbase API for the access token and refresh token. We can do that by defining our query parameters just like we did in the previous function, then set that as the endpoint variable. Then this login variable, notice it awaits a post request to this endpoint. The value of the login variable is going to be the response from this endpoint, which should be the Coinbase access token and refresh token. What's really cool is we can just treat them like normal variables, even though it's an asynchronous operation that would normally require us to call then. Once we have an access token from Coinbase, we can make API calls on the user's behalf. So the first thing we're going to do is get their user profile by calling this get Coinbase user method that we're going to define next. Then that's also going to be a response of some data, including the user's Coinbase user ID. Now that we have that, we can actually mint our own custom Firebase auth token. So we call admin auth create custom token with the Coinbase user ID. Then one last thing we're going to do is save the Coinbase access token and refresh token in Firebase. And I want to point out that it's really important that you have good security rules on these. They should really only be accessed by the admin on a backend server. Then we can just have this function return the auth token. So in other words, it's going to return a promise of the auth token string. Now that we have this access token from Coinbase, we can start making calls to the API. I went ahead and extracted this into its own function because it's probably something that you'll want to reuse. It makes a get request to Coinbase. And the important part here is in this request, we need to have an authorization header that's formatted in a very specific way. It should say authorization with bearer and then the actual access token after it. So that's all there is to it for the cloud function part. Now we need to go back to Angular and fill out our auth redirect component. Again, this is the component that lives in that pop-up window that Coinbase redirects to after the user signs in on their Coinbase account. Coinbase sends back the auth code in the query parameters. So we're going to use activated route to retrieve it. And we'll also bring in our auth service and the HTTP client from Angular. During ng on init, we'll get the actual query parameter code from the URL sent back to us from Coinbase. Then we can use it to make a request to our cloud function endpoint and mint the actual auth token. If the code is defined, then we'll point to localhost 5000. And we'll make a post request to that endpoint. And with the response we get back, which is going to be the custom auth token, we can then use it to call custom sign-in from our auth service, which will authenticate the user. Then make sure to subscribe to send the request. Let's go back to Angular and try out our login button again. This time we go to Coinbase as expected and then authorize. And now it's calling the cloud function and minting that token. After a second or two, it closes and we're logged into Firebase with our custom user ID. You can verify the user is created by going into your authentication tab in Firebase and you should see your custom user in there. Then you'll also want to go into the real-time database and make sure the access token and refresh token are saved under that user ID. And again, make sure you have these locked down in your backend database rules. 
I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video here, but in the next video, I'm going to show you how to use these access and refresh tokens to make requests to the Coinbase API. You'll be able to send and receive Bitcoin payments as well as see the balance in the user's wallet. And it opens the door for all kinds of different creative cryptocurrency features. That's it for Coinbase OAuth with Firebase. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you're serious about building apps with this stack, consider becoming a pro subscriber at angularfirebase.com. You'll get a free copy of my book, as well as one-on-one -on -one project support and a whole bunch of other exclusive content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.